Uh, hello, it's been a couple of months since my last update. Um, I'm not sure if you can really see me very well in this light. I know the lighting in my forehead, it's kind of blinding. So I'm going to put on this awesome smart wool hat to kind of help with the glare. Um, but yes, I do have baby hair now. It's so soft. It's, uh, be jealous. Um, let's see. I'll go through some quick updates if I can keep them quick. I'm still waking up, sorry. Um, so it's been a couple of months since I was discharged from the 9200 unit. Uh, the uh, nausea and the taste aversion kept me on TPN for a while. So TPN was the uh, IV nutrition, and that was no fun. But um, let's see. Uh, I had a case of HHV6 viremia, which is HHV6, so it's just a very common virus that um, everybody's usually exposed to. And that was successfully treated with two weeks of phoscarnet. Um, lots of nausea, lots of uh, not eating, but uh, went away. And uh, then they uh, still had, I still had a lot of nausea going on, so they, uh, they signed me up for a sigmoidoscopy and an upper endoscopy. And uh, those showed some uh, very early signs of apoptosis, uh, just cell, cell death in the uh, in the intestines, which basically was just a early hallmark of uh, GVHD, which is not unexpected. So they put me on, um, they being my providers, my awesome providers at the uh, Duke Bone Marrow Transplant Clinic, um, put me on some high-dose prednisone, and within like a few days, the nausea started getting better, and they took me off TPN, and the nausea got better after that too. Um, so I started eating a lot, and uh, that was, that was a, a fun period of time where I could actually start eating food again. Um, and uh, the taste aversion continued for a while, so there was really only like three foods that I was eating for a while, but my parents were like uh, awesome in cooking for me, so it was basically just a meal of salmon and potatoes and uh, some vegetable um, two or three times a day for weeks, so uh, until the taste aversion went away and uh, then I was eating a lot better. Um, let's see, what else? Um, about a month ago, uh, well, the HHV6 went away. Uh, that responded well to the phoscarnet. Uh, CMV showed up about a month ago, cytomegalovirus again, a very common virus. Um, my immune system basically is brand new baby immune system, doesn't know anything about any of these viruses. So that's kind of why, like, um, yeah, I have to teach it um, or let it learn. So, uh, we went on, or they put me on gancyclovir for a couple of weeks. Uh, that didn't really work so well. It, it seemed to work, and then it stopped working. Um, so they're trying to figure out why the, the CMV kind of became resistant to that. Um, so they, uh, a week or two ago, they started me again on phoscarnet. Um, I'm responding to it much, well, I'm tolerating it much better than I seemed to the first time. So that's fine. Um, still kind of on a daily array of medications including antibiotics, antifungals, steroids, uh, antivirals, that kind of thing. Basically just to um, keep, uh, keep all that stuff at bay while my immune system learns about the world. Um, on a daily basis, I'm still not really on daily now. Um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, sometimes a little more. Uh, going back to the bone marrow transplant clinic to uh, just uh, get blood draw, um, check vitals, that kind of thing. They uh, check my blood counts and see how uh, hemoglobin and platelets and white blood cells are all doing. Um, tell whether or not I need electrolyte infusions uh, like magnesium or potassium. Those are some of the common ones. A lot of the medications I'm on kind of like leach those out of the system pretty quick. So um, it's not uncommon to need uh, an infusion. And um, the nurses, providers, and fellow patients there are all pretty amazing people. So it's uh, it's not really an unpleasant thing. It's just kind of a daily routine. You just go into the clinic and spend a couple hours there, depending on what infusions you might need, and then head back home. Um, what else? My uh, engraftment is looking really good. I mean, it, it, it kind of the, uh, the the non-trial one, the just the regular. Uh, the unmodified engraftment just took, and uh, it's been looking like it's been pretty strong uh, the whole time. Just uh, they have like a scale where they do weekly or regular checks of uh, 
how much the engraftment shows, and it, and it can go all the way from basically like non engrafted to 98% engrafted or something like that. They, and it's for me, it's shown like 98 or more for weeks and weeks or months or something. Um, let's see. I uh, still don't really know uh, the status of the leukemia remission, but not, you know, not really going to know that until another bone marrow biopsy happens or something. So. Um, but the blood counts and everything look good, so there's really no indication that I'm still dealing with that right now. But, you know, won't know for sure for a while, and um, there's always chance of relapse and stuff. But, you know, it's just how it goes. Uh, this is just the best course of action. Um, let's see. So that's mostly just the medical stuff. Um, I'm still living in South Point with Durham, uh, with mom and dad. Uh, since being uh, discharged back in December, uh, it's been... Uh, actually a very pleasant couple of months they've uh, the, they've just been well pleasant in some ways um, they you know it's it's they've just done a just a wonderful job of taking care of me just cooking for me and cleaning um, just keeping everything basically just taking care of all the logistics and for a lot of that time I was just just so overwhelmed with uh, fatigue or moodiness or uh, you know medication mood, like a lot just they, they've been fantastic so it's uh, it's it's, I was worried about living with my mom and dad for a few months in an apartment, and it's, it's not been bad at all. It's actually been pleasant. Um, yeah, a lot of the, actually, so I apologize if I have been really terrible communicating with anybody. Um, just with the fatigue and the moodiness, uh, a lot of the moodiness comes from the medications, but also just from recovery and having nothing else to do. Um, it's been just kind of a very isolationist period. Um, so... Apologies, but I'm sure y'all understand. It's uh, it's uh, I'm looking forward to getting back, hopefully, to a more positive kind of outgoing personality once I return more to a uh, somewhat normal lifestyle. Um, yeah, the steroids and the Ativan that I've been on for anti-nausea uh, just they don't they don't really leave you feeling very uh, positive. But it's uh, it's 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 easier knowing that it's mostly due to that stuff. So. Um, and spending most of the time uh, for the first month out of the hospital just like sleeping just I'd come home from the clinic and just sleep and then get up and uh, eat a lot after the TPN uh, went out and the taste aversion um, dancing up a storm I basically taken to dance dance revolution as my form of uh, physical therapy indoors just because it's it's convenient and um, you know, walking outside in the sun and cold is not as convenient, but I've actually gotten uh, much better, and I'm just starting out on some difficult stuff now. I, I, I've, I've mastered the basic level of DDR, and now I'm, I'm heading towards difficult, so um, that's something, I guess. And we play cards at night. There's been a lot of, uh, a string of transhumanist movies that I've enjoyed to varying degrees. Uh, Transcendence was, was a good movie, I thought. Lucy, I thought, was just awful. I'm sorry, ScarJo, it was, it was, I mean, she was fine, but the editing of that movie was just terrible. Um, her, with Joaquin Phoenix, was just, I thought it was just an amazing movie. Um, that was, yeah, it's one of my favorite movies of the year, I think. And uh, Kay and I watched Blade Runner last night, and that was uh, fun to see, finally, kind of start to finish. Um, I'd seen it in pieces, but, um, but otherwise, yeah, life for the last couple of months has been uh, very routine, very bland. Um, haven't really uh, done too much. Uh, I guess, well, I started working again last week, so I put in a full work week last week, and I'll be working this week and hopefully for the weeks to come. Um, so that was, uh, that was, I think there was anxiety around that just, you know, after being out of work for like a month or two at least, um, just returning to work and knowing that I could still do my job and be productive and helpful. Um, there's anxiety, but it worked out pretty well, and uh, so that helps a lot, just to feel kind of productive again. Um, near future, I guess, uh, we're going to see how uh, the CMV responds to the phoscarnet. Um, I'll, uh, you know, hopefully, as long as it responds well and there aren't further complications of, of that kind of thing. I'll get discharged uh, from going to the clinic on, on as regular basis um, and probably return to uh, the apartment in Raleigh with Ty and um, 
figure out kind of uh, just a safe and healthy lifestyle for a while just because my immune system is still going to be like um, learning and vulnerable for a while. I'll get immunizations, I guess, all the baby immunizations in November, December, sometime, sometime in that time frame. Um, I guess I'll be avoiding the sun through the summer, but uh, hopefully return to exercising, running around the lake maybe in the morning or evening um, if anybody wants to uh, start getting involved in climbing or racquetball or that kind of thing, those things I am hoping to uh, take on. So um, for the past couple of months, again, thank you very much, uh, Mom and Dad and Kay as well, for just all your support and help and uh, company. Um, I, uh, I look forward to catching up with people. I figured I'd, uh, I'd, I'd use the rest of this, like this, that's really all that I had to talk about. Um, I figured I'd uh, show a little bit of uh, just technical stuff from the home infusion stuff that I do. Um, it's boring, but it's also somewhat interesting, I guess, to me. So I'm just gonna record it and you can watch it if you want. I'm just gonna give myself uh, my, my bi-daily uh, home infusion of, of magnesium and phoscarnet um, and uh, just record it for the sake of recording it. So I'm just going to get into that right now. Uh, let's see. Oh, I was warming it. One sec. We uh, keep it in the fridge, but if you start infusing it when it's refrigerator cold, it kind of hurts a lot. So, um, well, not a lot, but it's just uncomfortable. Um, so now they're more room temperature-ish. They give me these pumps and stuff. So first, I've got to hook it all up. This is kind of a home infusion pump. I don't know what that beep was. Oh, apparently I turned it on. The array of medications and charts and stuff. Gotta do it right. And this all goes in the uh, Pikmin. Still going strong. So uh, this band is an anti-nausea thing. Um, I've kind of just gotten used to wearing it. I'm not really sure if it's still helping me much or not, but it works really well for motion-based nausea, which is interesting to me. Um, Just uh, getting to learn how to do a lot of this stuff has also been kind of interesting. Somewhat tedious at times, but uh, it also facilitates freedom because otherwise I'd have to get driven into the clinic and uh, sit there for hours while they were giving me this infusion. But since they can deliver it to home, I can store it in the fridge and I can just administer it to myself. 
makes it a bit more convenient, frees up some time from the day, which has been useful these days for work. to make me shake a bit, which is kind of funny. The tacrolimus. It's just uh, basically pre-programmed for the bag. You just tell it to repeat the existing program and uh, prime it. Basically meaning it just starts putting a few milliliters into the tube so you're not going to give yourself an embolism or something. I don't know if you can see that, but it's coming up the tube. the air filter It takes about 6.5 milliliters to fill the line. It's about to start coming out of the air filter, back down the tube. prevents it from going back up. Okay, so that's all primed. I'll just put it in the case. it up to myself. So pick one of these lumens. Clean it off. I'm just gonna shut that off, otherwise it'll keep beeping. Fifteen seconds of cleaning. Alcohol prevents, I guess, all the germies. This is kind of cool. The uh, nurses will just check the blood return, see a little bit of red, and then so that's flushed. And I just hook up the Carnet 
to it. And start it running. And it just goes through all its settings. It takes about two hours to infuse. I do it twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. All right. Can I get someone to come over and check my line? But, you know, that's what the nurses always do. Check that the clamps are unclamped and that it's actually green and running. But So now I have a phosphornet infusion running to that one and I'm just going to set up this this is the magnesium supplement or the uh, electrolyte um, and it's basically a self pressurized kind of pump um, it's kind of cool just do the same thing for that one to a different lumen seconds. blood return thing again just because it's cool. Pull it back. Oh, it's my blood. Get back in there. Look at the magnesium. And unclamp that lumen. You might be able to see this fill up. Uh, it's probably not going to be visible. I'll unclamp the magnesium. You can see some bubbles rushing around there. The air filter kind of fills up. These lines are already like pre-charged or something, so there's really not much. You don't really prime it or anything. And that's it. And I just kind of wait for a couple hours. Well, uh, those infuse into me. Then, uh, once they're done, basically I just go through a simple process of taking them off and flushing them again with saline and um, heparin to prevent clotting up the lumens. So, figured I'd show you that. Um, it's kind of a regular routine for the last couple of months. Thanks for watching. Over here.